Coach, I got a great one for you today because if you want to get your athletes matched up on inside backers and you want to attack the middle of the field in your pass game, stick around, watch this video because I'm going to break down the bow concept for you. How's it going? I'm Coach Alex Besoff from the Spread Offense. And in this video today, I'm going to show you what the bow concept looks like on paper. We're going to talk about it out of a two by two three by one set. We're going to talk about the, the routes that go into the concept. And then we're also going to talk about how you can coach up your quarterback and his progression within the concept. Then we're going to jump to some film, look at how the Browns, the Lions, and the Rams are all running the bow concept in their offense. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it and talk about the bow concept. Let's go. Go ahead! Getting into the concept, we're going to look at it out of a two by two concept, and I have both sides of the ball being inverted with the receivers in the formation. You don't have to do both sides, but I do suggest that uh, the side that the bow concept is going to be ran on is inverted, which uh, in this example, I'm going to have it drawn up from the right side. On the left side is you're going to see smash on the other side of this. So if it's condensed, you can run your smash like this not condensed you can just run a hitch or you can still run a hitch here if you want to uh, but a lot of times what you see is a smash concept and reason why is because bow is a great concept against middle of the field open to high safety look and the smash concept here does a really nice job of pulling a safety out of the middle of the field which is eventually where you are going to want to end up attacking the defense so you could run this as a smash concept you, you could even try working in a slot fade here however the defense you're facing is scheming it up where you feel like you're going to put uh, this safety being able to put him in a position to where he has to respect this route out here so uh, anything over the top and to the outside will most likely get that safety to be kind of removed from the middle of the field and then on the side where the the bow concept is going to be ran this receiver that is inverted on the line of scrimmage, he is going to be running a basically a dig route. It's a deep in, 10 to 12 yards is about what I would say. And then the number one receiver uh, to the outside of him is going to be running a spot route. And for him, we want him kind of crossing the tracks of the, the slot receiver. So that's why I like it being inverted because your slot is going to clear things out first. He's going to get vertical right away. And your receiver outside of that is going to come inside of him almost, you know, kind of right off his butt and spot up in the window right there. Usually it's about where the tackle is, is a, is a good landmark for that receiver. And essentially what you're trying to do with this concept is you're trying to put this inside backer who is responsible for a hook curl zone. You're trying to put him in conflict. So he's either got to take, get vertical and take away the dig route. And if he does, then you're going to look to throw the spot route. If he is pushing and expanding to the spot as he works his hook curl drop, then you can see how it opens up nicely in the middle of the field for being able to rip that, that dig route right down the middle. So, um, and then you can also include your running back into this. If this outside backer is a problem with your spot route, you can send your back out into the flat trying to influence this guy to the outside as well so he can't sit on the outside shoulder of the spot route which uh, really shouldn't be because you don't want two defenders in one zone but you can put some horizontal stress on this outside linebacker as well just to make sure that those window there that window there is is nice and big for the quarterback to throw into the you can also do that to the other side of this as well send him out to the left um, you may have to change what type of concepts you're going to be running out here. so you don't have two guys out into the flat, but that also might pull that will out of the box as well. And again, uh, opening up that middle of the field for the dig route. So that's usually what you see from a two by two look, what you'll see when we get to the film of how teams are running their bow concept and you can make it a full progression read for your quarterback. So he's going to read uh, one in the flat, two on the corner, three on the dig, four on the spot. So kind of a full field progression, pretty far advanced, I would say, especially for high school quarterbacks to be able to get through four reads in a progression. A lot of times it's usually two reads I feel like is pretty good for a lot of teams out there. So um, you may want to make this more of a pre-snap, like alert for your quarterback. If the corner is off at eight, nine yards, whatever it may be, that might be a deal. Hey, catch and throw the, the smash route right away or the sorry, the, the flat route. If they both appear to be uh, taken away before the ball is snapped, if the corner is like pressed up on your outside receiver 
and the safety plays with outside shade or head up to outside shade on your slot. Pre-snap, you don't like those two options because they're playing with outside leverage on outside breaking routes. So now you can coach up your quarterback. Okay, you don't like it pre-snap. We're going to go automatically to the bow concept on the backside once the ball is snapped. Now it is movement key, uh, a movement key concept. And so it's that if-then scenario that is built into this concept. So again, if the mic gets vertical and, and robs that dig, then we are going to throw the spot route in the zone that he just vacated. If he expands out into his hook curl zone and, and, and attaches to the spot route, then we're going to throw the dig route right behind him. So that nice high-low concept, easy read for your quarterback, built-in if-then scenario, and essentially what you're trying to do, you're trying to throw it to where that defender is not. So that's pretty much what it looks like out of two by two. Give you a quick example of what it looks like out of three by one, and then we'll get to the film. The way I would teach this with uh, this look here is more of the, the go route and the post route now being an alert for your quarterback. So alert the go, alert the post, pre-snap read. If you like the matchup that you have, then go ahead and take it. If the corner is pressed up and you like your matchup with, with your receiver on that, it's catch, one, two, three, throw the ball. Same thing with the post route. If the safety is flirting down here anywhere and you like your outside receiver running the post and think you can get over the top of it, then again, one, two, three, throw the ball. So I would have these two as alerts. That's one way that you could teach it and coach it up. If you want, you can also really turn it into smash by putting this X here on a burst corner and then sending this running back out here into the flat. And if you want to do it that way, then you can make this again another full field progression read where it's one into the flat, two on the burst, three on the dig, and four on the spot, and alert the post coming from the number one to the trip side. So you can mix and match uh, on the single receiver side how you want to treat that, whether it's it's a, just a single receiver route and it's a matchup-based uh, alert for you, or you put the back into a concept as well and make it more like smash, and you give your quarterback the option to go through the progressions. But again, I think that's pretty difficult for a high school quarterback to go through four reads in a concept. The other way that you can do this is make it a half field progression where it's similar to the shallow concept where a lot of teams are reading it from the top bottom. So the post, the dig to the shallow. Here it would be very similar to that with post dig spot. So eyes would go to the safety if he takes away the post. Then our eyes come down to the mic, and it goes back to that movement key concept, right? If then scenario, if he takes the dig, throw the spot. If he expands and attaches to the spot, throw the dig route right there. The other way that also safety could play this is if he jumps the dig route in front of him, then you throw the big post over the top. So that's kind of the, the movement key um, progression that you would be looking for in terms of coaching it up to the quarterback. Um, the best way I think quarterbacks would have a, a chance of being successful in this concept at the high school level would give him those alerts pre-snap though uh, and say, if you like it, throw it. If not, just come to the, the dig and the spot route. That's three by one. You saw it from a two by two. Now let's get to the film and check out how Browns, Rams, and the Lions are using the bow concept in theirs. All right, here the Browns are in a three by one concept. And again, with the bow coming from the backside of this, you're going to see number uh, two receiver who's on the ball inverted. He's not really going to run a dig like you saw on paper. It's more of just a bender for him as he's feeling out where the open grass is. But he's he's getting underneath the outside defender over the top of the inside defender, and he's crossing over the middle of the field. The number one receiver is going to cross his tracks and spot up right there. And then the tight end in Joku here, he's going to be pushing out into the flat. So there's your horizontal stress to try to keep these guys outside of this thing and really work this high-low concept on that hook curl defender right there. And then on the bottom here, you're going to have, I think, an option route or maybe an out route. But what you're going to see is the ball is snapped. Flacco's not even going to be looking in this direction because right now, if they're trying to attack the flat space with this route, then this right here, the depth of the corner pressing up is just, it's a red light from the very beginning. So what you're going to see is Flacco immediately go to the bow concept side and he's just working that movement key. So there is no progression for him other than his eyes are on the linebacker and he's going to end up throwing it to where he's not. So you can already tell Flacco's made up his mind. One, because defender here hips are 
are parallel to the line of scrimmage and his eyes are on Flacco right now. He has no idea where this receiver is right here because his eyes are in the backfield watching the quarterback. So there's no chance he's ever going to be able to make a play on this ball being thrown right into this window right here. The other thing that you're also going to see is how that linebacker right there is pushing out. And again, if he's going to push out and attach to that spot route, then we want to throw the dig right behind it. So really, really good timing here from Flacco. Also because he's not waiting. Obviously, he's a professional, but he's not waiting for his receiver to get into the window to throw the ball to him. And that's where a lot of quarterbacks make a lot of mistakes is they wait for the receiver to already be in the window before the ball releases out of their hand. And by that time, it's too late. That linebacker right there on, on the backside here would actually probably end up making a play on it if Flacco did that. Uh, however, what Flacco is doing, and again, he's a professional uh, compared to our high school athletes, he's throwing him open into the window. So he's getting that ball out, you know, as pretty much at the same time as his defend or his receiver is behind the defender. Uh, great job throwing it into the window and simple high low concept. Put that inside backer in conflict and you get a really nice big play like you just saw here. Take a look at it from the end zone copy. This is the Flacco's read right here. There's the hook curl. You can see his eyes are moving right on him right now. He's pushing out, okay? Because he's pushing out at the very top of this screen, he starts shuffling outside. The dig is coming in right behind it, and there it is. Nicely timed ball for his receiver. Again, simple concept, but great wrinkle here from the Browns. Here's Detroit running the concept, and I love the way that they do this. You've got to steal this concept if you're interested in the bow concept or you already do it, literally just take this, steal it, and rep the crap out of it because I love the way that this looks. And I also put this clip in my favorite red zone concepts video, which if you want to check out that video, I'll leave a link in the description below to that so you can check out some red zone concepts. But Detroit is going to start in a two by two and they're going to motion to a three by one. And this is just so creative. I, I love this look. Uh, I could watch this clip all day. They're going to take their uh, receiver who's on the ball and they're going to use him to just clear out the middle of the field. And then the concept is going to be ran between St. Brown and Laporte who is coming in motion. St. Brown is going to get inside the tracks of that clear out and he's going to spot up right there in that hook curl area where those linebackers are. And then Laporte is coming in motion and he is going to split this. And his motion looks like he's carrying this thing vertically to the outside. But what ends up happening is he gets vertical and then he bends it back over the middle of the field. And Goff is going to get his eyes on this hook curl player right here. If he attaches to the spot, he's going to throw the dig. And that's eventually what you're going to see on the backside or on the front side, I should say. They're doing some concept stuff here with with the running back and the number one receiver. But it appears that Goff really likes uh, the trip side right away. So you can just see his eyes naturally work to the right um, when the ball is snapped. So there's one on the ball, sorry, two on the ball, clearing things out. St. Brown coming underneath both of them, sitting in that hook curl area of the linebacker. Laporte getting wide in his motion, getting vertical, and then coming back over the middle of the field. Like how beautiful is that right there? Love the creativity here in this design. Love the conflict that it's putting on those second level linebackers who aren't great at, at being in coverage anyways. Uh, and just again, another simple concept looks super complicated and, uh, but very simple for the quarterback to read. He's looking at one guy on defense. He attaches to St. Brown on the spot route. So he throws the dig right behind it for a touchdown there. So again, if you're not doing this, if you're interested in the bow concept or you already run it, you've got to steal this from the Detroit Lions. Just absolutely amazing. Okay, now the Rams are running it here and they're in a three by one. And I really like what they do here. They got the tight end attached and then they got Puka, who is an absolute baller on my fantasy team, did amazing for me. Um, but then what they're going to do is they're going to motion Cooper Cup to the other side of the field and they're going to be running the bow concept to this side here. And similar to what you saw on paper with a two by two look with the bow, they're going to be running. A, that's a, not a very good drawing, but smash route here. And then Puka is going to be sitting up right here. So it's a little bit of smash to it. And again, trying to pull this guy out of the middle of the field 
as the dig route comes here and then Cooper Cup is gonna sit up right here. So on this side of the bow concept, this is the hook curl player here. And he's got a lot of work to do as Cooper Cup comes in motion. Got a lot of work to do to be able to, to cover and get into his drop. And he expands right away. It's really easy read for Stafford. And Stafford, again, is throwing his receiver open. So the decision is already made right here. Decision is made. Dig route is going to be the one that is coming open because 41 is expanding outside. Stafford does a great job letting that thing go. I mean, receiver is still behind the defender there, not even breaking inside yet, and that ball is already out of the hands. So really good job of throwing his receiver open into the window rather than waiting for him to get there and then releasing the football. But uh, another great wrinkle here from the Rams in terms of the two by two, sorry, three by one motion to two by two and really working that weak side linebacker in his hook curl drop. So you can see it's a pretty simple concept. You can teach it as a full field progression with your quarterback if he's someone that's capable to be able to go through those reads. And obviously, if you have the offensive line to be able to protect for that long, or you can simplify it, teach it more as a movement key concept where you're building in alerts with an if-then scenario on that high-low concept there. So however you do it, make sure you have fun with it and you continue to attack the defense. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to see you guys on the next video.